Hi, this is David at MASH IT. So we've had this G14 for a few weeks now. I want to do a brief video tonight showing its gaming performance and how it's been handling in its day-to-day -day use in our office. Well, before we get into the gaming and performance of this laptop, I just want to talk briefly about my experience of using it. Now, I'm going to be honest, I normally buy large laptops. My personal gaming laptop is a 17-inch, and if I could, I'd even go bigger and get an 18-inch laptop like my old Anywhere 18 I used to love back in the day. So moving on to this 14 inch, I thought was going to be a real struggle, but having used it for three weeks, I've realised how amazing it is to have a 14 inch gaming laptop. I'm using it in many more situations than I normally would. With a 17 inch, you kind of want to be set up on a desk. It's great to have that screen size, but you really got to want to use it. With this 14 inch, I can just throw it in a bag, pop it on my lap and just use it wherever. And it's been a really great experience. Now, don't get me wrong. Gaming on a 14 inch screen is a little bit more cramped and you do need to lean in further than you would with a 17 inch laptop. So over the past couple of weeks, I've set myself up a little gaming station in the office where I can just dock it straight in with a keyboard and mouse and a monitor. And I've been really enjoying this laptop's performance. So I just want to quickly show you the setup that I'm currently using. I'm using a 240 hertz Alienware 25 inch gaming monitor. Now I've chosen this monitor, and again, this could be a bit overkill for a lot of people. There are cheaper ones, but I happen to have this one in the office anyway. But the reason I've chosen this is it's because it's a 1080p high refresh gaming monitor. Now I wanted a 1080p screen, so it matches the resolution of the G14 laptop. Now the reason for that is for two folds, there's never any scaling issues. They're both running at 100% scaling, so I can literally move the mouse remote and never get any scaling issues. And secondly, when I'm playing a game, this 3060 isn't the most powerful card in the world. I'm going to want to be playing them at 1080p. So I also want my external monitor to be playing them at 1080p so that they play as well on this external monitor as they do on the actual G14. And it's got the added benefit that if I unplug the monitor and I start playing back on the laptop, I don't have to muck around with settings and resolution between the two. Now, whilst we're talking about the external monitor, I'm actually plugged in at the moment through the USB-C port, which also carries DisplayPort. And you can see I've got a little DisplayPort hub here. Now, the reason that I've done that is firstly, it allows me to enable G-Sync on my monitor, which is G-Sync capable. But secondly, this bypass is Optimus. If you're plugging in through the HDMI, because there's no MUX switch, you're always using the Optimus graphics. So if you want to use the dedicated GPU of the RTX 3060 or 3070 on the G14, you're going to want to use the USB port. Now, the keyboard and mouse choice I've used for this is purely to match my white monitor. For the keyboard, I've got the Keymove Snow Fox 60% red switch mechanical keyboard. Now this is wired and wireless, but obviously when I'm gaming, I do normally use it through the actual wired port. But this is a lovely compact little unit. The backlight is beautiful and it sits nicely on the desk and sort of matches my setup. And for the mouse also to try and match in, I've got the Razer Basilisk in mercury white, again, so they're both RGB and they're both the white that matches up with this monitor. Also, I find if I'm playing for a longer period of times, it's nice to have a decent keyboard and mouse that's comfortable rather than being hunched up over the laptop screen. Now, the actual adapter I've used here is just a little Display Matters USB C adapter which has Display Port, two USB ports, Ethernet port, and power delivery. Now we're not going to use the power delivery on the G14 because we want the full power of the actual uh, laptop which uh, the 100 watt power delivery won't give you. So we do need to plug in our power adapter as well. But what this does mean is that I'm only plugging in one cable to have this entire setup working and the power cable. So it's really nice and convenient. I pop the laptop down and I'm just plugging my two cables in. Now admittedly I've got a external disc on the side because I'm obviously recording some footage at the same time. But normally these would be just the two cables I'm going to have to plug in to get the laptop working. Okay, so now I'm going to move on. I'm going to do a couple of minutes of benchmarks whilst I'm actually docked to this monitor. And also I want to do a quick few benchmarks of the laptop on battery because obviously having this compact little laptop, it's nice the fact that you can actually use it on your lap. You want to be able to game on your lap. So we're going to have a quick look how it is actually playing either on battery or with a power bank. So that's coming up. And then at the end, I'm going to leave it with some gameplay footage with timestamps down below so that if you wish to, you can jump to the games that you wish to see playing on this laptop to get an idea of how well games run on this tiny little G14. So I just want to quickly touch in again on performance, having used this laptop for a little while now. Now I've been using it mostly in the turbo mode. I find the fans aren't too loud and the temperatures do not get too high for the extra performance that you're getting by using that turbo mode. Now we did run through a load of benchmarks in the previous review, but just to quickly recap, the times by score in turbo mode is 7,353, with a graphics score of 7,138 and a CPU score of 8,876. 
So running this docked through the monitor, keyboard and mouse, I'm plugging in via the USB-C so that I'm using the dedicated 3060 GPU. Now on the turbo mode, the times per score was just very slightly lower, but I think this is within the margin of error. So we got a score of 7,241 with a graphics score of 7,073 and a CPU score of 8,370. So the, the difference there is negligible and you're not going to notice that in day to day. But what you do get by obviously bypassing that uh, Optimus graphics is certain titles, especially esports like CSGO and some other titles, you're going to get much higher frames per second. So definitely when you are in your room or whatever, it's definitely worth docking to get that extra performance. And just lastly, I want to just talk about battery performance because this isn't something that we covered in the review. Now I've completed a run of time spy on battery, I disabled the NVIDIA battery boost and we got a score of 5,878 with a graphics score of 5,597 and a CPU score of 8,224. Now this is really impressive scores for battery use. Very often gaming laptops are really heavily hamstrung on battery. Because these are power efficient parts, you're getting more performance per watt and it's quite a capable laptop to use on battery power. Right, so we're gonna try some battery gaming. You can see I've unplugged the power cable. We're gonna play a bit of Apex Legends. Now I'm running in performance mode in the actual ROG crate software and we've turned off battery boost in the NVIDIA GeForce experience so that we're not limited to the 30 frames per second that you will do out of the box. Now Apex is a great game because obviously it's not too heavy. It'll run well at the 40 watts that this is able to provide on battery. Now because this is obviously a very power efficient laptop with the Ryzen CPU and this 3060, you can play easily for a good hour or so like this on a game of Apex. So here we are running around on the ground, I'm getting between sort of 60 and 90 frames per second. Now this is at all high settings like I would normally play on mains. So really impressive because I'm on battery. Now as I say, this will kill your actual battery life, you probably get just over an hour. But obviously you can use the NVIDIA GeForce battery boost, which will then cap your frames per second. And that will give you longer battery life, but obviously at the expense of much lower frames per second. I like having high frames per second. But you can see, it feels like almost like you're playing plugged in. It's really impressive. Obviously, because we are only running at 40 watts on the GPU and the CPU is probably capped down as well, the temperatures are nice, 60 odd degrees for the, for the GPU there, and the fans are hardly even wearing up. So for this past month using this G14, I've been incredibly impressed with this tiny 14 inch little gaming laptop. It's got an amazing amount of power for a 14 inch laptop. And for the people that are moaning that it's only a 60 to 80 watt 3060 or 3070, they really need to take a look at how small this laptop is to see what sort of power it is actually packing. If you want a higher TGP graphics card or a higher powered processor, you just need to move up to the 15 or 17 inch models, which have that slightly better cooling system and size of the laptop to be able to dissipate that heat. But once you get over the fact, it is a lower TGP 3060 with a maximum budget of 80 watts in its performance mode, and you actually just start playing the games and enjoying the games, you realize this is where the laptop excels because you've got a tiny, powerful little package that you can throw in your bag or throw straight onto my setup here. It's not taking up a lot of room and you're up and running in no time. And when you're playing the games themselves, you forget that you're actually running on a laptop. All right, so I'm gonna carry on playing a bit of Warzone now. I'm gonna sign off. But if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe and the notification bell. We really do appreciate it and allow us to make more content for you. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the gameplay footage running with timestamps down below so you can jump to any particular sections you wish. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching. It's over. Listen up, soldier. Win here and you return to the front line.
But if you lose, you're dead. <laughs> Time to earn your freedom, soldier.
Dragonars. On this fallen field, I dedicate my powers to the lofty Skyrath. It is my honor. As it is Never. in my power. Consider the consequences. Very well then. Forth and willingly. 